Uh, good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio reporting for Milling and Grain magazine. It's the first of the month, it's that time again, and we have a brand new edition, uh, hot off the press, uh, in the mail today. So it should be arrived, this July edition should be arriving with you in 7 to 14 days, depending on where you are. But allow an extra couple of days this time because of the disruption that Corona uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is causing us in the mailing system globally. Uh, I'd just like to point out that we take a very environmentally friendly attitude towards our print version. Not only do we use uh, the right type of paper and the right types of ink, but now for the last six months we've been covering our magazine in a biodegradable uh, material that's made from potato starch that is compostable. So please don't feel that you have to dispose of it in your recycling bin. You can use it at home in your own garden. Thank you very much for that. That's the uh, the, the one announcement I would like to make. Uh, besides, before switching over to introduce uh, Rebecca Sharrett, she's our features editor and standing in for Vaughan Entwistle this month. Uh, he's on holiday. Uh, to bring us up to date with some of the things that you're going to find in this month's edition. Uh, welcome, welcome, uh, Rebecca. Hello, Roger, and hello, all milling and grain readers. Yes, Rebecca, uh, you've put this fabulous magazine together this month. Uh, it's as big and bold as ever. Uh, can you tell us some of the features that took your eye when you were compiling it along with Vaughan? Definitely. We have a variety of stories in this issue, a really good range of feed, food, processing stories. But one that really stood out to me was a storage uh, story from Nuero Industry Tech. And this is a German company who specialise in conveyor and port construction. And of course, for any company in this sort of field, COVID-19 has been a really big issue for them. Because how do you construct any ports or conveyors when you're not supposed to be in contact with anyone? So Nuero, in this article, they go into a lot of depth of how they've managed to sort of accommodate these restrictions while still working. And it's been really interesting seeing the different problems that they come across and reading about how they overcome these with particularly digital mm. solutions, they'll carry out repairs on the phone, mm. um, they'll make sure if they do construct things, they'd work through extra safety precautions so that they could carry out work in person without putting anyone at risk. Oh, so it's definitely yeah. an exciting story. I think it's, you know, this whole COVID thing, despite the tragedy of it and the impact that it has on us, I think it's making our industry particularly shape up to the idea that food is not a constant, that we have to deal with all sorts of problems. Maybe mostly they're, they're local or regional, but this time they're global. And, and I think that's very important information that we're passing on, you're, you're gathering there to alert people to what they could be doing or should be doing uh, should things get worse, which we definitely hope they will not. But, uh, you know, we have to cope with these uh, global challenges now. And uh, these are very good stories. Um, you mentioned to me just before we came on air that you have also done a little bit of uh, work around the events, given that a lot of them are changing uh, dates or cancelling, postponing. Uh, what's the update there? Definitely. Um, as you'll probably see in our event calendar page, our event page is constantly changing to reflect how coronavirus is evolving and adapting. But we are finding that a lot of companies now are hosting webinars and online events. And these are just as impressive as the physical ones that we used to go to. We have two very good event reports in this issue. Our managing editor, Vaughan Entwistle, attended Serials Live, um, a key UK farming event that he said was just as impressive as always, and it saw over 10,000 attendees over two days from 78 countries. Mm. And also, my reports featured about the IGC conference, which is another UK-based event, which featured 14 conference sessions that were pre-recorded and on-demand for viewers, so you could go through them at your own pace and really take in what they had to say about how coronavirus has affected the harvest year. And along with that, we have all our regular updates about the latest postponements, the latest event updates, so everyone can uh, keep on track with what's going on in the industry. Yes, I'm sure that the physical events will come back with a bang uh, when we are allowed to gather or travel and gather within uh, or within a meeting, some sort of social distancing. But in the meantime, we see these webinars uh, 
Uh, happening, Hamlet Protein had one the other day, and they're not just about product sales, they're also about uh, enhancing staff or growing your your skills, etc. And that's that's interesting because we actually are doing our own webinars as well, aren't we, uh, Rebecca? Uh, we, we've just had uh, the trial for one today. Um, I know it's on extrusion processing for aquafeeds, but uh, that is going to attract over 50 specialist people uh, next week, I believe. Yes, we have the Aquafeed Extrusion Conference taking place July 8th and 9th, and that features some great speakers from Bula, Jeffo Nutrition, Clextral, Reynolds Engineering. And it's definitely worth everyone attending to find out how to make the best use of their feed processing technologies. Mm. And you can find that link on our homepage or on any of our websites if you would like to consider coming to that. Uh, tomorrow there's going to be an important announcement. We're going to announce the online milling school. Uh, more of that tomorrow when I interview uh, my colleague in the online milling school from uh, Bangkok uh, on Rongo Rongo Live. But it, just in short, it's going to be a 12-part learning experience over a 12 week period running from an hour and a half to two hours uh, on a Wednesday morning or depending on where you are on a Wednesday and uh, it culminates in a certificate of attainment at the end once you've collected all 12 but it's a, ro a an ongoing rolling process so you can collect eight this this 12 week period and another four next so uh, it, in a way, this lockdown has provided us with a lot of opportunities to try different things. And uh, this is one that we're trying and uh, Rebecca's playing a part as well. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. No, I've definitely seen a lot of collaboration with more companies as a result of webinars. I've, you know, I've watched so many where actually, instead of just the one company hosting a webinar, there's been three or four companies working in unison to discuss and complement each other's ideas through panels and discussions. And I think they've been really interesting, getting an insight into multiple companies and their own thoughts about different is issues such as sustainability. Mm. Well, I also think that the Burla ones that we, we spent time in and the one by uh, Alltech uh, set the bar extremely high for <laughs> anybody following. And uh, they, they were exceptional events. Uh, with thousands of, I think it was something like 10,000 and 20,000 respectively uh, participants over the days that they were held. But, um, you know, I, th I think uh, webinars are here to stay and we'll see over time how, how well they do about the actual practical events or complement them, obviously. Uh, in the feature section, what did you find this month that took your eye? Um, another very interesting story I saw was one about the Chinese feed industry and how it's really started to develop and grow in the past few years. Um, the story is by Dr. Weguo Wang from the Henan University of Technology in China. And he talks about all aspects of feed, the ingredients, the additives. And it's amazing how much the Chinese feed industry has expanded and grown in recent years. Uh, in 2019 alone, China produced 210,138 million tonnes of feed. <laughs> really? <laughs> Over 200,000 tonnes. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And the numbers are just growing year on mm. year. Mm. And uh, that's quite a complimentary story to our main feature this month that came in uh, at the last minute, just as we were about to go to press, uh, from uh, China, from Woodley, in fact. Uh, do, do you re recall that story, Rebecca? Yes, it was a great story and it also complemented you managing to you know, explore your recent visit to them last year because mm. they've made a new flower mill with four production lines. Yeah, well just to put some statistics behind that, it's the world's largest flower mill uh, and it just added a brand new uh, facility with four lines as Rebecca said and believe it or not, you know, make a note of this because when when you think later on today did he really say it yes he did this company is now producing 47,000 tons of flour per day 47,000 tons per of flour per day i mean it's extraordinary and we're fortunate enough to have uh, 
a cover uh, shot of the mill itself, the new mill itself, standing right, they call it a workshop eight, standing right beside workshop seven. And uh, we were fortunate enough uh, less than 18 months ago, our team to be in Woodley and we visited workshop eight and took pictures of the new mill across the, across the way. Uh, but you'll see some pictures of, that we took within the mill and we talked to the owner, etc. I mean, a, a hugely successful story of somebody developing milling uh, from scratch over a 20 year period to the world's biggest flour producing company. As I said, don't forget 47,000 tons of flour per day. Amazing. Uh, anything else to report, Rebecca? Um, I think really it's just the amount of events we're doing and you know Perrindale and Milling and Grain magazine is making sure to stay active despite the lockdown and despite the virus we're making sure to really get out there engage with companies and really keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on and that definitely reflects in the magazine I think especially with this issue there's such an international focus it shows that even though we're confined to our homes we're still getting out there and exploring yeah well, that's very good to hear. We've got a team globally uh, around the world uh, reporting back to us and all because we have this desire to keep you informed of the latest things happening in all aspects of milling. But thank you very much, Rebecca, for taking us through this issue. Uh, I know you're well on the way to the August edition. And if anybody out there has uh, uh, material they'd like us to consider, please send it in to Rebecca. But for now, thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you for having me, Roger. Bye for now. Goodbye.